shakedown time, and I'm pretty sure there's still some boost leaks. So I started investigating a little more, and I found a couple things. Let me show you. So for one, the V-bands that come with Flowtech headers absolutely suck. So we're gonna hack those off and put new V-bands on both sides. That's gotta be leaking. It's kind of hard to show you, cause like, I just, you gotta believe me, it's leaking <laughs> on both sides. It may not be a lot, but it's leaking, and every little leak counts. Number two, for the time being, we just sandwiched two turbo ends. This is a S400 flange on there, and the other side's a turbo S400 flange that was cut off of an old turbo. You just to like get up and go, and we're gonna put the proper S400 V band up in there, so that'll be nice and sealed. These flanges here, they were missing a gasket, so I got one gasket. They have two. They're supposed to have two gaskets. I put one gasket in there with the other gasket, and it's a little bit thinner. So I ordered, hopefully, the right size gasket. They'll seal up with just one, but we want to be double, triple sure. So we're going to make sure there's two gaskets of the right type in both sides. So we get the new header V-bands welded on, and we're going to do some heat wrapping, get the S400 V-band welded on, and then get the right gaskets in those. This should be airtight, like zero boost leaks. And, uh, you know, we may not even notice the difference, to be honest, but should, in theory, should. <laughs> tried pressurizing the system <laughs> my my fernco uh doesn't fit over it but it fits inside it and i just kept filling and filling and filling maybe i couldn't hit the volume with this little pump here but or this little compressor but i i couldn't get it to pressurize so i figured the air is just literally going out somewhere like didn't even i don't know it, it, it really could just be that that thing does not have the volume to fill all these pipes, that inner cooler, the intake, the cylinders, and then through the exhaust. But I, I mean, I filled this thing up like three or four times and kept pumping it, pumping it, pumping it, got nothing. So it's either there's a really big boost leak and it can't even pressurize enough to, to hear it whistling or I don't know. But that uh, connection on the turbo with those two uh, turbo flanges made it together like that. That's probably definitely leaking. I mean, it, it's flat up against each other, but it definitely, the backside that I can't see is probably got a gap like that. So that fixes it. Um, and there is a gap like that, then yeah, this thing's going to build boost way faster. That's a huge leak to have. So hopefully that is the case. And hopefully all these V bands and whatnot help it. got some bad news so um yeah the car was on track for this weekend doing its first shakedown taking it out uh you know to mexico and doing its first few hits dialing up the suspension and everything and getting the alignment well first getting the alignment ready on the front and then getting all the air out of the brake lines and then tire the new tire to replace the one we shredded it's gonna arrive today and you know slap that on that's no big deal and then take it out to mexico this weekend and start doing some of the hits on it you know which is where the fun begins and um Unfortunately for me, something happened. So in the past, about four years ago, I had two back surgeries on my uh, lower spine. I had bulging discs and the pain was to the point where I couldn't walk. Actually had to, maybe it was like six years ago actually. I had to quit my job, couldn't even go to work, couldn't do anything, couldn't walk. And uh, I had a surgery where they cut the herniated disc out and uh, they give you 16 weeks to heal. And then that herniated disc is no longer touching the nerves, so you don't have pain anymore and you're good to return to life. Well, probably about two weeks after that 
that 16 weeks of rest, it re-herniated. So I had to have a second surgery. And the second time they went in there, same spot, it created scar tissue around the nerves. So now I went from not being able to walk to not being able to get at, in and out of bed. Like can't move at all. And um, that, that was a pretty dark time in my life really because I, I didn't know what I was gonna do. Like I was pretty much useless. I couldn't do anything. So it got to the point where they tried every medication under the sun and finally I told them, I said, listen, Y'all got to give me some of that strong stuff. <laughs> I need to be able to move around. It, it, if the pain's going to be there, it, it is what it is. I just need something to not feel it. So they put me on um, Percocets. And I did that for about six months. Quality of life obviously went up because I could move around. And again, we're talking about something that happened five, six years ago. And I got uh, another job. And started working and I felt like, you know, I don't think I need these painkillers anymore. I think I can live without them. So after about six months on the painkillers, somewhere in that time frame, they gave me this shot in my spine. It's like a injectable steroid. They put it right on the spot where the pain is and it takes the inflammation down and whatnot. And uh, somewhere in that six months, I felt like, you know, I probably don't need to be taking these painkillers. Uh, I'm just taking them now, I think, because they're fun or whatever. Or it feels good. So I stopped taking them. And four years later, uh, it's probably about a week ago, <laughs> I had no pain. I was doing everything back to normal life and just good to go. Well, about a week ago, I um, started having a little bit of back pain, which is nothing out of the ordinary. Normally, I'll just soak it real good in a hot shower and I'm fine. There's no, uh, next day it's gone. No, nothing crippling. And this time, uh, it didn't happen like that. It's still there. And what happens is when I'm walking, I can't bring either leg past a certain point without this pain just like stabbing right into my back. And I knew that familiar pain. So I was like, oh, this is not good. So I, um, you know, tried to soak in Epsom salts, that usually helps, and that didn't do it. And as time went on throughout the week, it got worse and worse. I stopped working on things, I started resting, trying to do anything to help it. Just say, hey, go back, go dormant again, chill out. <laughs> and uh, it got to the point where it's it was excruciatingly painful to get in and out of my truck. Uh, and my truck's not like super lifted or anything. It's just got like a little leveling kit on it. And I, I could barely bend over to pick things up because it hurt so bad. Getting in, that, in and out of bed um, sucks. Going from sitting to standing sucks. And um, just kind of, you know, put me back in that dark time where I'm like, oh, this is going to suck. So... Anyways, went and got an x-ray because they won't give you an MRI nowadays without first doing an x-ray, even though an x-ray can't see what we need it to see. And yeah, the same disc, um, the bones are almost touching. So we're pretty confident between me and two separate doctors I went and seen that, uh, yeah, it's in the herniated disc again. And they put me on steroids orally, you know, just put them in my mouth and steroids are definitely helping so far you know it's not something I want to be on permanently obviously I want this to just go away but they're definitely helping so while the steroids are kind of taking the inflammation down I'm just trying to take it easy I got this back brace y'all seen me hobbling around in and I'm just hoping and praying that this can subside and go dormant again and then I just need to be a little bit more cautious about how I'm uh, bending over, leaning over, working on things. Because when you're supporting that weight of your body, um, you know, all that pressure is on the spine. The muscles are doing what they can, but like, you know, I, I don't know. I don't got Ronnie Coleman back there holding up my upper body, you know. So <laughs> um, we're really hoping and praying that this goes away. Uh, it's crazy because uh, when... 
Um, we found out little Hoss was on the way. I told myself I, I need to get in shape so I can get, you know, chase this little Emmer effort around and talk shit to him. You know, I ain't getting beat up by my own kid. <laughs> so uh, I was at 278 pounds, probably the heaviest. Actually, yeah, that is the heaviest I've ever been in my life. This was about a month ago. I didn't start exercising. I just got on something called the carnivore diet. And since I'm still on it, since then, I've actually lost um, 30 pounds from 278 to uh, 248. And I plan to go all the way until under 200. But uh, this just came out of nowhere. So it really sucks because I'm going to have to put the build on pause. I can't do anything unless y'all want to come over and, you know, just help me build it. <laughs> I'll just tell you what I want, you know, <laughs> I can't pay you nothing, but, um, yeah, it sucks. You know, uh, getting in and out of this car is probably not the best idea either, just because your body has to get in weird ways to get in and out. So I really am just going to have to unfortunately put the build on pause and it sucks. You know, it really does because this is like one of my dreams in life to build this and it's so close to being to where I could start enjoying it but I have to stop because if I if I don't you know the only thing I'm going to do is make the back worse I need the back to get that inflammation down to chill out and yeah I know I'm drinking I switched my coffee out for old diet Baja Blast probably ain't the healthiest for you but it ain't got no sugar in it so you know that's give and take with these things so this probably ain't the video y'all were wanting to see and it, i don't know what i'm gonna do for you guys to keep you guys entertained and i feel real bad because you know we started growing a great community the facebook's going great uh, there's some builds on there that i don't even know why y'all are watching me y'all's builds are cooler than mine <laughs> but it's still awesome to see and uh yeah i gotta I gotta just simmer down and you know keep praying and see see what all goes on hopefully this goes away and stays away maybe it was a reminder that i needed for whatever reason i don't know but um yeah that's just where we're at i'm just gonna have to kind of relax for a little bit i guess um i'm hoping that i could give this a solid week of rest and then just kind of take it easy from there and the, the inflammation will go down enough to where it simmers down and stays away for another four years you know i'll take that <laughs> but if it don't i'm probably gonna have to get surgery to where they do a fusion where they put this cage around your spine so they give it like a lift kit and it like locks in all the way around and you lose range of motion which is good would suck but um the pain would be gone and um well i'd be a little bit stiffer but it, it'd be good to go i guess i don't want to go that route so we're hoping for the best and uh i'm gonna try and come up with some content that'll at least be cool and i'll catch you guys in the next one